Hello everyone, this is Jack with Obedia. Today we're going to be looking at Studio One and some of the metronome options. Let's get going. Okay, so I've got a session pulled up here. Uh, this is a kind of an unfinished session that some uh, musicians are going to be redoing some parts to. So uh, I got a lot of tracks here. It's not too organized yet. Um, but this is something that basically I'm going to send back out to uh, the musicians and they're going to overdub some more parts or redo some of the parts. So one of the things that I want to consider here is that if I'm sending out a track for somebody to overdub parts to, they may be using a different DAW. So they may be using uh, Pro Tools or Cubase or even GarageBand or Audacity or something like that. And one of the things that may be difficult is uh, generating a click track. So if I send them this session and I say, well, it's 190 beats per minute, well, that's cool, but maybe for some reason they had a problem importing the session and uh, they can't get it on a grid. And if they can't get it on their grid, they may not have um, a metronome option that's easily accessible if it's not already you know, perfectly in sync with the grid that's there. The other thing that people could have run into is maybe there was some issue where there was a track that was stretched or compressed or something like that as far as com time compression or expansion and uh, that could be you know causing some issues as well so anyway it's a good idea sometimes to or i would say most of the time to print a click and to uh, give that to whoever is going to have the session it basically just travels with the session so right now if i was just to check out these tracks uh, I have a lot of tracks here, but I don't have a click track. If I want a click track, the normal way of doing that is basically just to turn on my metronome down here. So, you know, if I was listening to the song, I can turn on my metronome with, uh, with basically clicking this button here. So if I want a metronome, I click that. If I don't want a metronome, I don't click that. Well, that's great, but if I hand somebody the session, the metronome, it, it's helpful at least if the metronome is an actual audio track. And then we can solo that and the audio track travels with the session. So uh, that's what we're gonna look at today and some of the metronome options. So obviously I can turn it on and off this way. And if I click this little wrench here, I get the metronome setup option for Studio One. And with this, I have uh, the accent level. I have the beat level, which is basically if this is a 4-4 a, a four, four piece, which it is, and you can see down here, uh, it says 4-4. Four, four. Um, I can set the one, beat one is the accent, and then beats two, three, and four, that's what they call the beat here. Um, and I'm just gonna actually go here at the end of the session, and we're just gonna listen to the click. So I'm just gonna hit play, and I'm gonna turn on the metronome. And I can turn the accent down uh, or up that way. I can really make it obvious that way. I could also just change the accent sound. And then one thing that's helpful sometimes is if there were a lot of uh, if if there were a lot of like busy passages where somebody is really playing a lot of stuff, maybe they want uh, an offbeat or the 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 click doubled and I definitely wouldn't want to go down here and double the tempo because that changes the way that the whole session is set up. So what I could do is basically just turn the offbeat on or turn it up as far as level. So that's a helpful kind of thing. The other thing that I can do is uh, set up pre-roll or pre-count. So this is nice. So basically it will count me off uh, a bar or whatever. So before uh, you you start listening, you could hear one measure of uh, the click track. Or obviously that's helpful if you were recording. So if you were going to start recording on the chorus, uh, beat one of the chorus, it would be nice to have a measure or two of click track before that. So you could set that up here. You could say pre-roll or pre-count. Um, and then uh, the, some other options down here are basically when uh, the session is uh, playing, do you want to hear the click or do you only want to hear it on record? That kind of stuff. So I'm not going to get into any of the more uh, extreme options with the metronome today. I'm just going to do a basic metronome here, and I'm going to leave it on click, uh, no different sounds or anything. I am going to have a little bit of an accent, and uh, I'm going to actually print this. And normally, with this, well, not normally, but with some other DAWs, it takes a little bit of routing uh, to print the click.
with Studio One, it's extremely easy. So one of the things that I'm going to do is come up here and show my marker track. And I'm going to see the song starts uh, over here. The song start flag is at uh, measure one. And then the, the start the song end flag is all the way at measure, I don't know, 233 or something like that. But nothing really goes past uh, about 165 in this song. So 165 should do it. And now I have a song start and song end. And then what I'm going to do is hit render. And then it says, what's my range? How much of my click track am I actually rendering? And I'm going to use the timeline start, uh, start to song end. So start to end, just like we set it up. And then I just hit OK. And now at this point, I have a audio click track where I can turn this metronome off. I don't have to use the, the metronome that's constantly generating a click the whole time. I can actually just treat my click track as an audio track. Now, at this point, the click track is an audio file, so it's in that, that folder with all of the other audio files. And if I send the session to somebody, they have the click, the, the click track with them. This is something that I would recommend doing to basically every session, even if you just mute it, uh, especially if you know that somebody else is going to touch this session. If it's anybody besides you, this will definitely be a, a helpful thing. It will also be a, something that you may want to consider when you're archiving your session. So in three or four years, instead of pulling this back in and, and hoping that it just falls on the grid the way that it's supposed to, uh, the click track will allow you to visually see if it's on the grid very quickly. And if it's not, and you don't really care if it's on the grid and you just want to use the click track as the click track, you've got it there. So uh, it's something that it is could be useful in a variety of ways, and I'd highly recommend doing it. So hopefully this video has been helpful, and uh, definitely check out some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. And thanks for watching. Today's Pro Audio hardware and software can give you excellent results if you know how to use it properly. Obedia can help you to get the most out of your Pro Audio hardware and software. Why spend your time scouring the internet for answers or digging through manuals? With one quick call to an Obedia technician, you'll be connected with someone who can give you the answers that you need in real time via phone and remote desktop. Obedia technicians are trained in all major digital audio applications on Mac, PC, iOS, and Android devices. Obedia member subscriptions are cost effective, give you great member benefits, and Obedia is here seven days a week to help you get the most out of your digital audio hardware and software. No matter what your level of expertise, Obedia can help you to stay focused and productive and get your music back on track. Start taming your technology today with Obedia.